Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, building experiences that connect, remove friction, and deliver insights. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is George Braun. For the past 35 years, George has been helping companies streamline their business processes with financial systems. Realizing that budgeting and forecasting were the biggest area of improvement for most companies, True Sky was developed. George is focused on building relationships with partners and their customers. When he's not working, you can find him mountain biking or kiteboarding on a tropical vacation. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, George. Thank you, Ed. Well, first off, George, why do you do what you do? What do we do? Um, it all kind of started way back. Uh, we had a, a consulting company for about 30 years where we implemented financial and business applications. And as part of that, we started to see a, a, a big demand for customers to ask for budgeting, planning, and forecasting. So for about 20 years, we sold uh, different products. And about 10 years ago, we said, you know what, maybe we should just build our own, kind of taking the best of the best. So, you know, we saw we saw that there was good potential for, for budgeting, planning, and forecasting. You know, most, most uh, companies are still using Excel. So there's a big market demand, plus budgeting, planning, and forecasting is a, is a very expensive, time-consuming process. Um, and it's something that a lot of our clients really wanted to automate. So that's that's kind of how how True Sky began and kind of what we ended up, you know, doing what we are doing. We just saw there's a big demand and, and and there's a lot of pain for a lot of the customers. Well, let's expand on that. Talk a little bit about some of the pains that you see involved in the budgeting and planning process. Well, what, what's happening these days is is the market's really shifting. I know that the companies used to budget once a year and they would go through this process where they would spend, you know, three or four months going through the whole budgeting process with a whole bunch of people. Typically, it's done with Excel spreadsheets. And, and although Excel is a, is a great tool for like a single user, you know, one or two people entering budgets, once you get into an environment where you have 10, 20, 50, 100 people entering budgets, it, it becomes really, really cumbersome. It becomes a very manual process. Um, there's a lot of spreadsheets that have to go out there. There's a lot of, you know, data that gets out there that may not be controlled. Um, there's, there's a lot of issues and a lot of challenges. And then when you bring everything back together, it becomes a big nightmare. You know, if somebody changes one of the spreadsheets or one of the templates, you know, nothing works. And people end up troubleshooting and doing a ton and ton of administration. The other challenge with Excel is uh, some really interesting stats out there that 90% of all spreadsheets out there have errors in them. So a lot of people end up spending most time troubleshooting errors as opposed to really focusing and analyzing, you know, what the budget should be. Um, you know, and that was kind of, you know, that was kind of historically the, how clients used to do it. But now with with a changing world, you know, with with COVID, supply chain issues and stuff like that, you know, doing a once a year budget just doesn't cut it anymore. Most clients want to try and automate this, you know, either do a you know a quarterly budget or forecast or reforecast or or even write down to monthly, just to kind of see what's going on. And and without a proper tool, it's just extremely challenging, time consuming, error prone, and 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 it's very very expensive. Because if you think about it, you know. A lot of people, especially senior people, spend a lot of time in budgets and, and their time could be better spent, you know, do, do, doing, you know, more of the analysis of the budget as opposed to doing a lot of the administration and, and kind of the, the troubleshooting around the spreadsheets. What do you think are some of the best practices that that people have put in place to, to really um, streamline that budgeting and planning process? What do, what do they do that makes it makes it work for them? Um a lot of things is really, to be honest, to try and simplify things, to really focus on what's important, what's actually going to drive their business, you know, kind of the 80-20 rule. Um, you know, you see some clients coming up with really complex templates that have a lot of information and, and a lot of data in them, and it makes it really confusing for people to enter. So we're finding that, you know, when somebody streamlines it, it makes it very easy for the end users to, to enter their data and just captures really what's kind of crucial to to helping them drive their business you know that that's one big thing um the other thing is you know the reality is nobody likes to budget so the easier you make it for the end users uh the better you know they don't want to spend a lot of time budgeting and going through complex processes so that the, the simpler you make it the better the other thing that's that's really helpful is is the the further you can roll it out into your organization like the closer you are to the action, like the more people you can get involved in the budgeting process, the better, you know, they have better information. Plus you can make people more accountable if they're actually entering their own budgets and are responsible for it. You know, it's really tough when kind of finance comes up with a budget, rolls it out to people and say, okay, here's your numbers, make it happen. It works a lot better the other way up, you know, 
from the bottom up with people kind of, you know, sitting down, analyzing, figuring out, you know, what the numbers should be, and then you can make them more accountable for them. What about in- incorporating non-financial numbers into the budgeting process? Is, is that still a, a struggle for people? And are a lot of people doing that or not doing that? Uh, well, th- yeah, that's definitely a struggle because a lot of systems, you know, can handle that. Um, and a lot, a lot of people have to take data from multiple places and, and kind of, you know, cut and paste them and bring them through. So entering non-financial data is also really important. You know, like if you think tracking things, you know, number of customers, number of transactions, number of orders, you know, things like that, that you kind of are going to impact how you are going to run your business. You know, it's going to impact how many people you need to hire, how much warehouse space you're going to need and, and so forth. Um, it's really important to try and capture as much non-financial data as possible. Plus, you want to have people think more about non-financial data as opposed to what accountants want to think. So, for example, you know, if, if, if the number of transactions or number of, uh, you know, employees you're going to hire or whatever is going to affect things, just get the managers to enter how many people I'm going to hire. You know, we don't need to know the actual number. Let the system calculate it based on the kind of employees you're going to hire you know, what their benefits are going to be and so forth. And in a lot of, a lot of ways too, some of the, the non-financial stuff can even be help with a predictive analysis, can it? Yes. Well, because you, you, you know, definitely, you know, you, you run your business based on numbers and whether the numbers are financial numbers or other kind of numbers, um, you know, they're going to kind of affect how you're going to drive your business, what kind of decisions you're going to make, um, you know, what people you're going to need to hire, you know, how many customers you're going to have to have, you know, what, what, what your forecasts are going to be, you know, potentially what your, you know, how many orders you expect to get or, or how many, you know, units you need to sell. Those kind of things are really important because they're, going to, they're really going to try and predict the future for you. And George, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? Um, I don't know. I would say Richard Branson is probably one of my heroes. Um you know, he's, he's built a lot of businesses from, from the bottom up, basically just looking at, you know, how to make things better for people, how to, how to kind of, you know, make life easier for everyone. As well, he's, you know, kind of very well balanced. Like he does a lot of adventure stuff. He kiteboards, which I, I kiteboard as well. So, you know, kind of have some connection to that. Um, and, and you know, he's made a lot of people very happy, I think. You know, he's got a lot of very happy employees. He's got great cultures in his businesses and things like that. So. I think he's done a great job, especially, you know, somebody starting from scratch. Like and lastly, George, to... and lastly, George, how can somebody contact you? Um, they can either contact myself personally at uh, gbron at truesky.com or just uh, send an uh, email to info at truesky.com and we'll be happy to help you out. All right, George Braun, thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.